Happy Memorial Day. I can, you know, that sounds weird. Happy Memorial Day. It's, but people say it. I, matter of fact, I heard it on the radio coming in this morning. Happy Memorial Day. I don't know what's happy about Memorial Day because Memorial Day is the day that we remember the men and women who died for our freedom, the men and women that did not come home from foreign lands. What's interesting about Memorial Day, it actually started in the Civil War. After the Civil War, uh, people would go and lay uh, plants and pray on the graves of the fallen soldiers. Then in 1967, it became an official holiday. Uh, Memorial Day became a three-day weekend. And in 68, actually it was 68, it became a three-day weekend when it went from the 30th to the last Monday of the month. So we could have a three-day weekend. Uh, the street that my wife and I live on, there's eight houses. And out of those eight houses, five houses have flagpoles. And those flagpoles are like 20 feet tall, and we're fortunate enough to have one in our yard. I didn't put it. Former uh, owner of the house was a military pilot. He put it. But five of the houses have flags. And three of the houses have flags underneath the American flag. And these flags fly all the time. And they distinguish what area of the military that person went in. We got a Marine, uh, JL. He's a Marine. He lives up there. And then across the street from him, we got Air Force. And then we have a thin blue line flying underneath one of the other American flags. And it seems to me to be a very patriotic street. And that makes me happy. When I drive down the street and I see the flags flying, it reminds me that we live in a wonderful country. And there's so much good in our country. Um, and we just need to remember the people that died so we would have the country that we have today. Um, okay. I just wanted to talk about that for a minute because it's so important. I know that we have people here that have been in the military. Veterans Day is a day that we celebrate them, those that are active military and those that were in the military but came home. Okay. Let's talk about something a little different. I'm going to talk about worship. Now, we experienced worship here with Pastor Jules and the, the musicians and, and uh, vocalists that do such a wonderful job for us here. But worship is beyond this. There are many ways in our life that we need to be worshiping, and it really touches every area of our life. I want to read this quote to you by Franklin Sigler, and he, he said this, the essence of worship as inner experience and the outward acts of worship which aid in the experience are interrelated. Now, that sounds kind of bland, but let me read it differently. The essence of worship as inner experience and the outward acts of worship which aid in the experience are interrelated. Makes a little bit more sense when you hear it like that. Moments ago, we were worshiping. And as you worship, an inward thing starts to happen. And it causes the hands to go up. In first service, there were tears coming down the face of some people as they sat there and watched them. See, that's the outward from the inward caused that to happen. Well, what is that? That's the, 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 uh, the, well, you know what? To be quite honest with you, there really are no words to really represent what Christian worship is. I just tried to explain that. I can't. 
Because it's Christian worship, and it happens to all of us at different times in our lives, and we don't know what it is, but it's worship. It could happen to you walking down the street. It could happen to you sitting and talking to your spouse. It could happen to you in a restaurant when you just finished the prayer for your meal. It's called worship. Worship just doesn't happen here. It happens in our lives, and we have to be conscious of the fact that as we live our lives, as we do our do, the do, the things we do during the day, it all becomes part of worship. If we are in tune with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, things happen. And one of those things that happen is called worship. So where do you find this? Worship. Where does it come from? What, how does it happen? It happens in our daily lives. Today, this morning, we were celebrating. Celebration. What do we celebrate when we worship? We celebrate the history of God, what God has done throughout history. We celebrate the fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who was died and resurrection. It came from a virgin Mary. We celebrate that because you know why? We've been held harmless. If we accept Jesus Christ, we are forgiven for our sins. We are regenerated. We're justified. We're found guilty, found innocent of those sins. We celebrate those things. As Christians, we celebrate the incarnation. We celebrate those things. We celebrate life as a Christian. It goes beyond the devotions. It goes beyond the ceremonies. We worship life. Is anybody here that doesn't like being alive? Now, who made that happen? God. It's part of our life. Every area of our life as a Christian belongs to God. What we say, what we do, how we interact. Because Christ is in all of this when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. He's in all of us. It's part of us. So we live our life holy and pleasing to God. Romans 12, 1 says that's our spiritual act of worship. To live our lives holy and pleasing to God is our spiritual act of worship. We struggle with that, don't we? I know I do. And I know that my wife does. We all do. We all struggle with giving it all to God. Even though we are to give everything to him, all of our possessions, everything is God's. But yet we have a tendency to hold things back. I told a story in first service about a guy that was buried with his Harley Davidson. I didn't like the story when the funeral director was telling it to me, and here I am telling it. But I'm going to tell it this time. But there's a hole, a motorcycle, and the guy. I thought, what is that all about? We can't take anything with us. I guess he thought that he was going to ride someplace. I'm hoping it was uphill, <laughs> you know. I don't know, it might not have been. might have been downhill. I don't know. But then there's dialogue. Dialogue is a way of worshiping as well. You see, God starts the dialogue with us. He starts talking to us in this voice, and it's, it's, you feel it and hear. We don't normally hear it audibly, but we, we start to feel it. He opens that dialogue. He says, I am here. For you. 
Knock and the door will be opened. He starts that dialogue. And then we hear it, and then we start communicating to him. And how do we start communicating to him? We start communicating to him through prayer. We also communicate it to him by how we live our lives. If we're living our lives holy and pleasing to him, we're communicating because we're worshiping him. In the first service, I talked about prayer. And I don't know, I finished the first service and I was sitting with my wife and we prayed. Sometimes you're burdened. Sometimes, all of a sudden, God speaks to you in a way in which you know that you need to go in a different direction. And I'm going to go in that different direction right now. People at first service, they didn't... In the first service, we talked about the Lord's Prayer. And I was going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to talk about it. But then I'm just going to focus on one part of the Lord's Prayer because I think this is very, very, very important. If you know the Lord's Prayer, say it with me. Um, I'm going to actually read it because I seem to always mess it up when I think I could do it from memory. And then people go, that's not part of the Lord's Prayer. It is mine. <laughs> so I, too, am going to read it. And it's different, you know, depending on the version. It depends on what you're reading. But let's, let's do this one from the NIV. It says, and read it. Say it with me as I read it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debtors, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now that's out of Matthew, NIV. If you go to Luke, it's a little bit different. It says sinners, forgive our sinners, okay? In, it says, and forgive us our trespassers as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive our debtors as we forgive those that, you know, sin, sinners, all that. Okay? I want to focus on that part right there. What, what is Jesus saying? The Lord prayer, he gave that to his disciples as he, Jesus was praying and he had gone into a quiet place where he prays and then this dis met with the disciples and the disciples asked him, how do we pray? Well, that prayer touches on everything you need to know about praying. Everything you need to say to God, it says that. But there's this one part, and forgive us. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'll tell you why. It's because we're human and we're not God, and we hold resentments, and we do things against other people, and people do things against us, and I don't like it. I don't like the fact that you got to forgive the person that messes with you. I don't like that. i got to be honest with you. Until I found Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I had what they call a quick trigger when it comes to anger. I used to get very angry and lash out at people. God took that away from me. And those, that you, those of you that know me, you probably never seen me mad because I really don't get mad anymore because God took that away from me. But I still harbor resentments. There are people in my life that have done things against me that I don't like. And what the Lord's Prayer is saying, you need to pray for that person and, and forgive them. I don't want to. I really don't. 
Because I feel as if though I'm weak and they're strong. We feel that they've got it right and I've got it wrong and I got to suck it up. I don't want to suck it up. I want bad things to happen to those people. A couple just came to mind, ironically enough. Hmm. But God says, no. No, no, no. You can't do that. Because you want me to forgive you. You want me to find you innocent, but yet you're going to hold it against somebody else? It doesn't work that way. Do unto others as I have done unto you. I have forgiven you. You forgive those people. So when I became a Christian and realized I had to do all that holy stuff, it took me a minute, and I still struggle with it. But you know something? I found out that when I forgave somebody else, I felt lighter. I didn't feel as burdened. I didn't feel as if though somebody took advantage of me anymore. I felt as if though I had done something holy and pleasing to him. The reality is I can't go to sleep because I'm angry at this person and this person's sleeping like a baby because that person don't care. I'm the one that was injured. I'm the victim, and I can't sleep. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to everybody. So what I'm seeing this morning, another area of worship that we need to be in, and that's prayer, and especially the area of forgiveness. Because I'll tell you something, going through life, harboring resentments against other people, anger against other people, will get you nowhere. And I hope that when you walk away this morning from here, I hope that you think about those people that have hurt you. And I ask that you say a prayer for them. It doesn't have to be real elaborate. All you have to say is, Father God, I forgive this person. Forgive me for the resentment that I have held against that person. And love them as you love me. You'll sleep better tonight. And God will continue to show you grace. Let's pray. Father, we come to you broken that I have held resentment against people and I haven't been able to give it up, Lord, I pray that you open my heart and mind to receive. <sighs> receive my forgiveness. I pray that everybody within the sound of my voice can ask you for forgiveness for the resentment that they have harbored in their hearts. I ask, Lord, that you forgive them. Give them an opportunity to say, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry. Please forgive this person. Jesus, he was on the cross, dying. And he said, Father, forgive.
forgive them for they know not what they do. As he hung and died for our sins. So Lord, I just pray that you be with each and every person and help them along the way to be able to say, I forgive that person. In Jesus' name we pray.